Karen. Yes. Today, I am thrilled. Yay. You know why? Nope. Well, <laughs> it just so happens that today we're about to dive into something you think you know, but trust me, you don't. I think I know. Yes. Or like you in general, right? Well, me specifically. I mean, in general, but really you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. You're telling me I don't know something that I know that I don't know that. You think but, you know, but yeah. you don't. Right. Today's episode yeah. is a total game changer. I like games. <laughs> We're diving into the world of intuition, manifestation, and a bit of magic Ooh. with someone who walked away from a corporate career to follow her true calling. She's now helping millions to tap into their inner power and manifest their dream lives using a tool that's been around for centuries, but with a completely modern twist. She's taken a seemingly mystical practice and turned it into something incredibly practical and life-changing, a practice that's often so misunderstood, but now has been given a fresh, empowering twist. <laughs> What are you doing with your hands there? I'm trying like, to be... Are we practicing a, Kung Fu? I'm being emotive. <laughs> emotive. Someone someone wrote in and said I wasn't emotive enough. So oh. I'm being emotive. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going on a journey that blends ancient wisdom with modern life in a way that's going to completely surprise you. We're talking about unlocking personal insights, finding clarity, and maybe even a touch of magic. Are you intrigued yet? I'm very intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're making fun of me. Well, today's no. show is definitely not what you'd expect, and I guarantee it'll change how you see this tool that's been around for many, many years. Stick around. You might just discover something you never knew you needed on today's episode of The Skeptic Metaphysicians. My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully. We both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And wait, you joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The, the Skeptic, Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Hey there, I'm Will. And I'm Karen. And today's guest is a true pioneer in bringing intuitive wisdom to the mainstream. See, she's an intuitive entrepreneur, best-selling author, and the founder of the globally recognized brand Biddy Tarot. Wow. Uh -huh. After leaving a successful corporate career in 2012, she built a seven-figure business th that empowers millions to trust their intuition and manifest their goals using Tarot as a guide. Now, her latest book, Intuitive Manifesting, introduces a groundbreaking approach to manifesting your dreams. Please welcome the incredible Bridget Esselmont to the show. And I hope I didn't just ruin your last name. <laughs> All good. It's so good to be here. <laughs> well, we are thrilled to have you. And first question, are you hiring? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, you know, I'm really excited to talk to you about Tarot has been around for billions of years, it feels like, like millions and billions and trillions of years, at least. And you are taking it and you are turning it on its head and making it so much more accessible to folks, right? So let's, let's just set the table first and foremost, for those that have been li living under a rock the last three centuries, what exactly is the Tarot? All right. Beautiful. Well, the Tarot cards are 78 cards. This is my little deck here. And these are 78 cards and each card has a picture. So let's have a look. Here's just a random pull. This is the temperance card. And you'll notice it's a picture. It has symbols on it. It tells a story. And so inside of each of these 78 cards are deep and profound meanings, uh, stories, themes that might show up in our life at different times and that help to give us more insight into what we're experiencing now, it's interesting that you were saying like uh, earlier with tarot as this kind of mystical tool because oftentimes like you go look at a TV show or a movie and there's always someone sitting in a corner like mysterious, they've got dark <laughs> eyeliner on and they're pulling the cards and sometimes like they pull the death card and then someone drops dead, right? Um, and so we have this <laughs> misperception that tarot is this fortune-telling tool or it's something that's a little bit evil, mm -hmm. um, mystical. 
And my experience of Tarot has been something so different. And I'm really here to bring Tarot into more of the mainstream, to use it not as a tool to predict the future, but actually to create the future and to use Tarot in a way that helps to empower us, manifest our goals, really understand what's circulating around us so that we can really reach that future that we most desire. Mm, okay, call wow. me ignorant, but I've never heard of anyone using the tarot or tarot that way before, right? Is, have you heard of that before? I haven't, but first of all, I have to call out, you are just so, you just admit joy. You are so joyful the way you speak, even when you're like, oh, the death card and someone drops dead. <laughs> A little <laughs> smile on your face. No, but I can just, I just want to listen. I can see how people would be just enthralled by you and what you're saying. So I guess we should actually get back to the topic, but I just wanted to point that out. Right. So uh, <laughs> back to the topic at hand. So no one's, I've, I've not heard anyone use the tarot in that way. And I first, I need to ask, tarot or tarot or tarot, how do you pronounce it? I've heard it so many different tarot. ways. Tarot. Right, like, yeah. Yes. I would say no to the tarot. That sounds like carrot. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <That's laughs> like, mm, I, always, I always know when I'm speaking to someone who has never heard of tarot before and they say tarot. However, Tarot and tarot can be used interchangeably. I think it maybe maybe it's a more of an American thing to say tarot, um, but I know ah. us Aussies tend to say tarot. <laughs> tarot. Okay. Well, we'll go with whatever comes out because uh, <laughs> I can't can get just like I, I practiced your last name a thousand times before we actually came on the air and still said it wrong. I'm probably going to say tarot wrong too. So well, just you're bear more with of me. a tarot guy. I say tarot, but you say tarot. I do say tarot. I think but tarot anyway. sounds a little bit more fancy, a little bit more posh. So you, you choose whatever you, you feels are good very to fancy. You. I, I am quite posh myself. Quite. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I've been told I belong in certain circles that it's been told certain circles. <laughs> I'm not talking about which circles, just <laughs> certain circles. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You, you are on fire today. I am, oh, but I love you. <laughs> okay. Back to the topic at hand for the 14th Sorry. time. Uh, all right. You used tarot uh, in a way that we haven't heard before. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, you help people manifest live, their, the best life by using this ancient deck. H how does that work? Yeah. So let's kind of do a bit of a juxtaposition because I think what people think a tarot reading is like is you go, okay, well, What's going to happen? Maybe, maybe you want to. Um, maybe your goal is to manifest a really beautiful, loving relationship, you know. And you go, okay, well, tarot reader, you know, when will I find love? And maybe they pull. Okay, oh, okay, great, good example. They pull it this <laughs> ten of swords, right? Have a look at it. It's this guy. That that, that doesn't look like a loving relationship to me. No. That it's looks the opposite. Bad. It looks like a, a close, a Glenn Close kind of. Looks like some of my past relationships. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So, you know, you might pull this card and then if you're doing more of like a fortune telling reading, then the reader will go, oh yeah, so it's looking really bad and lots of bad breakups and so on. And so you walk out of there going like, oh, that's not really like, oh, I'm not feeling very empowered, you know, that's not a great <laughs> right, outcome. Right. Um, I, should, but... I should mention for those that are just listening, this is uh, a man lying on the ground with a thousand swords sticking out the back of his of, of this person's body. So, uh, not a not a joyful card. So, if you're just listening, you should watch the video so you can actually see what card she's pulling. But go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, good. Now, if you asked a slightly different question, if you were asking not you know will I or when will I fall in love, but you might ask, what do I need to know so that I can find that really deep and loving relationship. So you notice that subtle difference in what we're asking. Mm -hmm. But now we open up to a whole different possibility because you might then see this card and instead you're going like, huh, I wonder if there's old relationships that I need to bring to a close. What does need that ending? You know, this is a pretty dramatic ending, right? To be stabbed in the back with <laughs> 10 swords. A thousand <laughs> times, yes. <laughs> Um, but you know, it might, it might open up that possibility of what else do I need to close out in my life so that I can then welcome that new love. And so we have a very sh like a clear shift in that dynamic and that energy and really that reclaiming of our power to go, okay, well, maybe I can actually change things to manifest what I desire mm -hmm. rather than everything just happening to me, you know? Yeah. No. Just a quick thing, because that sounds beautiful. It really does. 
But if you are asking me, even if I change the question that way and I get that card, I'm going, oh, God, it's going to be a disaster. I can't do it. Right. How, how do you make get your mindset to the point where you can flip it on a beautiful head like you just did? Yeah, for me, it's really about um, embracing all spectrums in life. So there's always things that are they might appear good and bad, but really everything in life is here to serve us in some way. And so even if we have like that 10 of swords moment, what is it allowed to unfold? Like what's the reason for having those more challenging times, those difficult breakups? What's the opportunity on the other side? Now, like with a 10 of swords, what follows a 10 is an ace, which is like a one and it's a new beginning. And so sometimes we've got to have the ending so that a new beginning can arise. So really stepping back from all of that, it's all about how do we see everything as something that is serving our highest good and is having a purpose in that longer term of our lives. So how do you know how to ask the question? If you're just coming in and you think, am I ever going to have love, you know, have my true love instead of thinking, well, is that something you help them reposition that question or how does that work? Because I think I would ask all of the wrong questions. Yeah. So great question. <laughs> that question. Hey, I got one See, of the right that's questions. that's not the wrong question. That's the right question, Karen. <laughs> well done. Yeah. So the questions that you ask are actually really critical for the answers that you receive from the cards. And as you can already start to see, like it can shift mm -hmm. uh, the insights yeah. that you're getting out of tarot. Um, generally speaking, anything that is like a closed ended question. So like is, when, should I, will I, all those types of questions that could be answered as basically a yes or a no, those tend to be questions that assume that everything in our destiny is already set in stone. But when we ask questions that are more open-ended, like what or how or why, um, then we're opening more of this like possibility and this opportunity to go, okay, well, how can I start to shift my reality? How can I welcome in new love? You know, what do I need to do in order to embrace new love? Who do I need to become? So these different questions open up different possibilities that actually allow us to be more empowered by what we're asking and receiving from the tarot cards. I just need to call something out, Karen, because there's, have you caught a theme on the last several episodes that we've had? I have. I don't know if it's the same thing theme you're thinking of. Uh, well, the answer right before this when she said that everything happens for your good. It is the same theme. It is the same <laughs> theme. It's amazing. We are going through something right now that the universe is absolutely keeps assuring us it's all for the good. Just relax. Just chill out. And you are like the fourth or the fifth or the sixth guest in a row that has talked about that specific thing. So I uh, thank you for doing that as well. And universe, thank you for sending Bridget to us and reinforcing this. We better listen before we get the two by four to the head. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. we've already had. So, <laughs> that's true. Do you know what? So Do you want me to pull a card? Are you like, would you be open to just, let's just check in and see what's 100%. happening? A hundred percent. Yes. All right. Is there anything else that you want to share about what's coming up for you at the moment? Or do you want to kind of keep it elusive? Well, I mean, which is better? Should we share? Should yeah. we not? What do you think is? I always, we, we... I like a share. I'm not a mind reader, so it's easier okay. for us to work okay. with and share. Okay. Well, there is a transitioning happening with me and my career. We're at a crossroads and I've got to make a very important decision as to whether or not to continue on the career path I'm going or opening myself up to something that could be much more glorious and yet scarier at the same time because it is not a secure thing. So my question would be. But, but wait, first, just a little bit of background. Um, you know, you say you have to listen to the universe. So this is the third time in 12 years mm -hmm. that he's been in this position with his career. And the first two times have been like, oh, no change, no change, please, no change. And, and things didn't change, which was good at the, you know, we thought that was the best thing, but it's become a career he's not enjoying, very stressful. Yet now there's this change again. It's like, oh God. It, it, it just keeps reoccurring. Yeah. And, and eventually it, it's, it's like the, it, it's almost like we were asking the universe for an off ramp. And we have now this off ramp, 
but it's still a scary road. The ramp is still kind of full of potholes and it's kind of a short ramp. Yeah, and it, <laughs> yeah, but we have the we have the ramp, and now we got to figure out whether we take the ramp or we fight to stay with what we've got, which is a sure thing. However, we've been kind of prodded into moving away from. In the and past. it might not be a sure thing. We don't know. Yeah, correct. That's right. There, there are the rumblings that there's nothing is sure. So we just don't know what to Bridget, do. Bridget, so many questions, so <laughs> many variables. That's, that's, the, that's why we're so like, ah, we don't know what to do. Yeah, this is great. And this is where I think Taru can be really supportive in helping us to make decisions. Now, it doesn't make the decision for you, but it shows mm -hmm. you possibilities. And so just as you were talking, I've just pulled a couple of cards. So what might you experience if you were to stay in your current career? What might you experience if you were to take this leap of faith into this new opportunity? And then what's kind of underlying it all? And these cards are, you like these? No, you may not like these cards. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but you know what I do like? I love her smile. I tell you, she's talking about death yeah. and the joyfulness. It's Right. <laughs> yes, you're about to be destitute, but I'm saying it to you with a smile <laughs> on my face. Everything is fine. I mean, if you're going to hear that, you want to hear from someone like her. Absolutely. So thank you, Bridget. <laughs> Give us the bad news. Go ahead. Awesome. Here we go. So this is if you're to stay in your current career. Now, oh, have a look at glasses. God. Okay. Yep. We're leaving, okay. baby. Oh, Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's uh, for anyone who knows the tarot, it's the eight of swords. And basically it's a person that's tied up with a lot of swords right behind him. Not like sticking up in the ground. Yeah. Not a feel good card. No, I would say he doesn't look happy. But do you know what? So she looks trapped. This woman looks oh, trapped she... by these swords and the swords right. are often our mental, like our thoughts. And um, oftentimes when we're overthinking, overanalyzing things. Now, the interesting thing is while she looks like she's trapped, she is bound and blindfolded. She could actually easily take off that binding and her blindfold and she would see that there's actually a very easy way out of this. And so this card often shows up when we, when we have like limiting beliefs or we believe that we are trapped by a particular situation. And yet if we were able to just look at it from a slightly different perspective or get a little bit more, maybe a zoomed out you know, perspective, we'd actually realize that there's more freedom than we realize. So, so just want to check in. How's that landing for you? Well, mm -hmm. I mean, that sounds pretty great. But just a question <laughs> about that, though. You said she could easily take off her bindings. How do you know that she could easily take them off? How can they're you tell? Not, they're not really that tight around her. She could probably she, just wiggle free. She could, like, rub up against the swords. <laughs> <laughs> She's got 17,000 swords behind her. She has to go. That's true. <laughs> She's and out. There's like, it looks maybe they're not even tied because look at the ground. It's like there's a ribbon. Maybe it's just hanging. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So, I like that. So, yes, it, it lands very, very yeah. squarely. Uh, and I completely understand what you're talking about, how it could be. And we've talked about it a lot that if I just stop being so uh, meticulous about things and I just go with the flow, things would be, it'd be a lot easier job, right? It'd be a lot more, a lot less stressful. However, we don't know if that's going to be around for a while. So, what was the next card? Okay, well, it's our little oh, friend from just before. <gasps> oh, no. But now you got me scared. <laughs> I think, okay, I think there's a really beautiful message in this, of course, there is. Um, and that is, you know, what needs to be released? What needs to be put to bed? What needs to be cut and let go of so that you could fully embrace this new opportunity? Um, it's almost like it's not going to come in fully until you're at that point where you have actually just gone. And I think what's interesting, you know, if that full cutting is maybe this release from the Eight of Swords situation, but there has to be something first that goes, bang, I'm not doing that. And then it opens itself up into something more. I mean, maybe that's killing off the fear. Well, I mean, that we've been, I got to tell you, I am head to toe chills right now. I'm my I'm, arms are crossed because I'm literally freezing. It is, it is unbelievable. So for those who are just listening, that was back to that gentleman on the ground with all the swords sticking out of his back. Um, that was the card that she pulled. And at my first thought was, oh, no, I, I, I don't have a choice. I've got bad decisions one way or the other. But what you just said makes so much sense because we know the direction we're supposed to go in. We we know, but we're afraid of the unknown. Yeah. And that perfectly illustrates what we need to do. Yeah. Karen, are you ready? 
I want to see the third card. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is there a third card? <laughs> yeah, it, there is. There is. And um, so I always like to look at the bottom of the deck to see what's underlying all of this. And thankfully, you know, in the midst of like two quite dramatic swords cards, we have this card and that is Temperance. Again, I think, do I have to put pull this at the start? I think I might have when I was showing you. You did pull that one. That was the first card you pulled. That's right. Uncanny. I'm, I'm not kidding you. I shuffled the cards as you were talking. I've fanned them out and I pull them in different ways. So these wow. cards are, are meant for you today. Okay. Um, this is very much about balancing, moderating, um, harmonizing, alchemizing. And maybe there is an opportunity here for bringing together two or more things. So it may not be as black and white as like either or as you think it is, but maybe there's something else where it is a bit more of a balance. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. yep. wow. your, your reaction, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> I think she has bugged our house and has been listening to our conversations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Uh, it really, wow. truly is amazing. It's it's scary in, in so many different levels, um, but in a good way. It's also yeah. it's also exciting and uh, in just thrilling and all the all those ad adjectives I can't think of right now because I'm so freaked out. <laughs> Yeah. So for someone who I guess was in a similar situation, you know, you walked away from your corporate, how do you let go of the fear? How do you get brave enough to do that? Yeah. You know what? I actually think that these things happen as like, it's like a test of your resolve. Um, you've already put this intention out to the universe that, yeah, I'm looking for something different. I'm calling in something else. So for me, you know, when I was, it was in 2012, um, I'd worked in corporate for 15 years I had loved my career when I first started. I was working as a management consultant and then I'd moved into a, a large corporate. But by the time I'd made that career shift, I was like, oh, this is just like killing my heart. I just felt so uninspired. I'd walk into the office just going, why are all these people here? This is just insane. Um, and I knew that something else was calling me. And I'd had Biddy Taru on the side. It was my side hobby, passion project but it started generating enough income, in fact, enough income that it would start to replace my corporate career income. And so for me, that was a really perfect and potent time to make the leap. Um, it was still very crazy on paper. Like, why would I leave a secure, stable corporate job to go and be a tarot reader? My mum thought I was insane, but there was something inside of me that was going, just do it. Like, we'll catch you. It's all going to be fine. We just need you to make this decision. And, mm. you know, what are we like 12 years later, I earn 10 times as much as I did when I was in corporate. Who would have thought from Tower? Wow. Wow. Um, and so mm. it is that real trusting, like, mm. even though you don't have the clarity at that point in time to say, hey, yep, it's guaranteed. You're going to be a successful. You'll be fine. Mm. You have to just trust that. Um, and mm. I think, you know, like I, I see that for you guys as well is particularly, you know, it's so interesting with the, this 10 of swords is actually saying to you before we even open up this full opportunity and possibility, we need you to show us that you are ready to make this cut. You have to have the ending before the beginning, right? Mm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Geronimo! Wow. <laughs> this is fantastic. Yeah. That, 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 I mean, you're I mean, incredible. Yeah, Holy cow. That is incredible. Just because it resonates so strongly. I mean, so strongly. Um, now, the skeptic in me has to come out and ask the question because I know there's a thousand people out there listening right now or watching or asking themselves the same thing. Those that aren't 100% on board with things like this, could they not say, just the luck of the luck of the draw of the cards. Couldn't uh, any card have given us a similar message that, but but kind of shifted in a different direction? Yeah. Look, in some ways, yes. You know what I love about tarot is every single card has so much gold in it and so much to offer. It's like seventy eight cards of our life. If you were to have a guidebook to life, I would say it's the tarot and everything that is contained within every tarot card. So yes, there is gold in every single card. And I also fundamentally believe that there is this little bit of magic. There's this whole matrix that we're working in 
that means that where you know I'm I'm working through like with your energy and as I'm choosing cards I'm being like connecting with that energy and choosing the one that's right in that moment and lo and behold we have you know three cards that have resonated with you very deeply and profoundly so I always say like there's there's so many layers into tarot and the magic of tarot. We can look at it from a very pragmatic and practical perspective and just go, oh, well, every card's got a message in it. And yeah, that's true. That's awesome. Um, and there's this other layer that actually is about tapping into our own inner wisdom, our own intuition, um, but also this collective uh, consciousness, collective wisdom mm-hmm. that is enabling me to be able to tap into your energetic field and offer you messages that are relevant to you in that moment. So if someone goes out and buys a set of cards and starts doing the spreads and and kind of reading them, there's every card has a message like you're saying, but wouldn't they be able to misinterpret that message? Is it better just to go to someone like you? Does that make sense? Yeah, so I think you could read and be like, oh, this guy's dying, you know, that's it. Quit don't quit your job. You know, I feel like it could be interpreted a different way. And how do you know which is the right way? Yeah. Uh so interestingly, you know, I started my tarot career as doing readings for other people. I've done over like ten thousand uh professional readings. Um, I don't do readings as much anymore now because I actually rather teach and show people how to access their own intuition, their own inner wisdom by learning how to read cards, but really more importantly, by learning actually how to connect in with what's happening internally. Because what happens is if you go see a tarot reader or, you know, a psychic or a healer, um, you're almost giving a part of yourself away, some of your power away. You're like, hey, guru, tell me what's going on. And Mm. I would rather spin that around and go, okay, well, how can I help activate within people this um, connection with intuition so that you're able to use, you know, intuitive tools like the tarot to access your own um, guidance and inner wisdom. Um, Is there a right and wrong with tarot? Mm, Yes and no. So with tarot cards, there are always like traditional tarot card meanings. So if you open a book on any of these cards, you find just generally the same types of meanings for each card. Mm -hmm. But then what I also encourage is when you are reading cards is activate your intuition and allow it to show you what needs your attention. So I don't know, let's, let's say like, okay, let's, let's go back to our friend, the 10 of swords, right? Mm. So it, whoops, there we go. If you're looking at this card, you know, what stands out to you instantly? What about you, Will? What's, what's kind of like straight up, where does your eye go? It goes to the dude with the 10 swords in his back. Right. Awesome. And then you start to go, well, what might it feel to be that man? Ow. Okay. He's dead. And <laughs> beyond that. All right. It'd be more like, <laughs> <laughs> and is that, do you associate with the man or are you observing the man? Are you in there or are you watching? That's a really good question. I felt in like in there, like we were in there. I felt like we were in there too. Yeah. yeah, you're experiencing the actual, the swords in the back. Yes. And so, you know, if we were to take this a little bit further, I'd even encourage you to start to like, okay, well, what does it feel when I have these swords in my back? Is it, is it heaviness? Is it pain? Am I carrying a burden? What would it feel to start releasing, you know, those swords out of my back and almost having like this somatic experience with the card? Because mm-hmm. what it's doing again is it's opening up your conscious awareness to um, something that is maybe stored in your subconscious and now we're bringing it into conscious awareness where you can start to take mm-hmm. action. So that's more of the intuition like at play when we're reading with the tarot cards. If you look okay. this up, you know, you could go to biddytarot.com and look up what does a Ten of Swords means. It will tell you, you know, betrayal, deceit, all of the, all of the things. Mm-hmm. But then we like to match that in with what's your intuition telling you as well about this card. Okay. So I'm, I'm getting that you don't, I mean, like we talked about earlier on the show, you, you, you liken these types of things with like crystal balls and tea leaves and things like that. But do you, I guess I'm assuming from what you're saying, you don't have to be psychic yourself to be able to use this tool. Anyone can pick up a set of tarot cards and find their way around it as long as they do a little bit of work on how to interpret them. Is that right? 
Yeah, hundred percent. I like when I first started reading Tarot, I thought, oh, I need to have a psychic grandma. No, I don't have one of those. I need to be able to speak <laughs> to dead people. No, can't do that. Um, and I was worried, like, oh, am I good enough to read tarot cards? But as I worked more and more with them, I realized that actually tarot was the tool that was helping me activate my intuition, to open me up more to my intuition. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love sharing this tool with so many people, because I can see that it is not just how do I read the tarot cards and do a tarot reading, but it's more about empowering people to finally trust themselves and that inner voice within instead of always looking outside of ourselves oh what does this person say I should do or what's the latest advice on this like that's not our reality it's not our truth and so it's really coming back into what is our truth and the tarot is a tool to help us get there what drew you to tarot in the first place well you know what um I was 17 and I was heading over to Germany for a high school exchange and my friend and I were like, okay, what's going to happen, you know? And so we went and saw a tarot reader. And I remember walking up those creaky old wooden stairs. It was very much <laughs> like in the movies. And she's like shuffling the cards and she's pulling the emperor card. And it's this, you know, guy sitting on a throne. He looks very sturdy. And she's like, oh, you're going to fall in love in Germany. And I'm like, okay, I'm sure you tell that to everyone. Fine, but whatever. <laughs> And then, of course, I go to Germany. I fall in love many times. And it was great. Did you say many times? <laughs> I did. <laughs> she fell in love many young. times. There's some cuties in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I got back from that trip. I'm like, man, this is cool. This was like, this is a fun trick to learn. And so originally I just wanted to learn tarot to kind of impress my friends and show them like what it could do. But then... Yeah, as I just got more and more into it, I realized it was so much more than what we think Taru really is. It's right. such a profound, transformative tool. Right. And on the heels of that, when you talk about being it much more than it is, you have a four-step intuitive manifesting method yeah. that you use the Tarot to help you with. Is that right? That's right. Yes. So... Tarot, you know, we've been exploring tarot today as this tool for manifesting, not so much a fortune telling tool, but one for manifesting. And when I really tune into like, what does it actually mean to manifest? This is where the four steps of intuitive manifesting come in. And tarot actually is the tool to help us through these four steps. And so it comes down to things like picturing your perfect future, getting really in touch with those core desires and then aligning them to your highest good. That's something we often forget when we set our intentions and our goals. We think, oh, yeah, it looks awesome on Instagram, mm -hmm. but we don't go, what's actually really important to me? What is in my highest good here? Then second step is becoming that energetic match. How do we actually step into our future selves? How do we become the person who is um, going to be able to manifest all of our beautiful goals? And the third is to break free from those limiting beliefs, anything that's holding us back. Tarot actually helps us to go deeper, not just what we think is getting in our way, but what our subconscious is storing that's getting in our way. And then the final step is to really celebrate success, to offer gratitude and also to trust and surrender. Like just what, we're, what we've been talking about today with timing. Sometimes it won't just kind of manifest exactly the way you want it to, but it's more important that we're allowing, we're in flow, we're aligning along the way. So those mm. are kind of the four steps in, in a nutshell. Um, and, I, you know, if, if you're like, oh, that sounds interesting, um, I do have a special free guide as well um, for your listeners so that they we can. We love, absolutely, we love free guides. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so head on over to like biddytaro.com forward slash four steps. And you can download this guide just to start to understand more about what intuitive manifesting is really about and how it's different from a lot of this traditional manifesting that really does skip that deep alignment, that intention setting um, and that action aspect. That is awesome. I'm going to, in fact, I'm going on it right now on my computer <laughs> like, because I'm, <laughs> I need that now. I need yes. it now. But here's a question that just awesome. occurred thank to you. me as you were talking. Yes. Thank you so much for that. That's, that's incredibly generous. But I am convinced I'm going to go out and buy a set of tarot cards tomorrow. Is that the wrong thing to do? I've heard a rumor that you're supposed to be gifted a tarot deck. You're not supposed to buy your own. Is that not right? 
Yeah, this is the thing. There are so many like myths and um, beliefs about tarot that I don't think are necessarily on track. Um, so I think that it's perfectly okay to go and buy your own tarot deck. In fact, it's probably even a bit better than someone gifting it to you because you get to choose something that resonates with you. Like there are literally thousands of different tarot decks out there and they're all it's always the same structures, generally always 78 cards, but they're expressed visually in different ways. So it's important you're finding cards that actually speak to you, that resonate, that are easy to interpret. You know, this is what I love. Um, what I've been sharing with you today is our Biddy Tarot deck, and it's based on the traditional Rider Waite deck. And it's great. It, because I, thought, it's, I thought it looked familiar, actually. Have you, I've picked up the Rider Waite before, and it, it, it very mm. similar in terms of the, the images behind it, but, but yeah. yet more artistically rendered, I guess. Like, yeah, it's got a bit more of that bitty, it has a bitty flavor. See, it's more approachable. <laughs> <laughs> nice <Yeah>. color, <laughs> just like me. <laughs> yeah. So is it true that if the card's upside down, it means something different? Yeah, you know, this is um, an interesting thing because a lot of readers go, oh, I just, I'm never going to read with reversed or upside down cards because oftentimes in books it's like, it's the opposite. It's the worst part of the card, like temperance. Oh, if that's balanced, then, oh, that's unbalanced. Everything's out of harmony. Um, but I actually like to see it as more about uh, when it's upright, it's what we're experiencing outside of ourselves, more of that external energy. And then when it's reversed, it's what's happening within ourselves. So this might be about internalized balance and harmony. Um, let's see. You know, mm. even a oh, high priestess, you know, she's very much about intuition, but then reverse that might be about our own intuition or what we keep private to ourselves. So that's a beautiful way of looking at it. And I love it much more than the opposite. Yes. But that would not be specifically where I would go to. So how does, how did you, uh, obviously you've got a lot of experience doing this and you've developed your own intuitive ways of reading the cards, but if I pick up a deck of cards and I get an upside down card and I don't read it like you do, how can we more align with like the cool way of thinking that you have? <laughs> well, take my courses and my programs. And ah, <laughs> I knew there was an answer. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> yes. I mean, it is like, that is my passion is just to be able to share how we can work with the cards in this more fluid way, like what we have today, because it goes way beyond just reading what's in a book. We can all do that. But where it gets more interesting is when we can start to play with like, yeah, what, what am I seeing in those images? How's my intuition activating? And of course, yes, thank you. It is it's something that I do teach in our um, online tarot courses and, and programs and books and decks and all the things. Oh, God. Well, we're going to add links directly yes. in our show notes to not just her website so you can actually reach out and start the learning process, but also uh, we're going to add that link to that free guy that you uh, mentioned earlier as well. So it's easy for people to, to access. Um, we we got to say, people, if you're listening and you were interested in taking the, the lessons, she would be the perfect teacher. Oh my gosh, this time has gone by so quickly. We've been laughing and smiling the whole time and just the joy is great. So check out her class. Yeah, no, please. absolutely. Uh, one last thing. Um, well, two last things. Well, many last things. Well, there's a lot of last things. There's, there's, <laughs> there, we got to keep cut, keep talking for a second. But um, your what springs to mind with that? Um, I've been trained to read the Rider Waite. Let's just say a long time ago, and the upside down card means one particular thing. So my intuition says this is this. But then comes comes along Bridget, and she changes. He throws. She throws everything on his head. And now it's a more beautiful way of looking at it, but which is the right way to read it then? Yeah, you know, I always encourage like my students to just play with these different techniques. So for a period of time, if you're now doing like more tarot readings because you love it and you're so inspired, then you might just go, okay, well, I'll try this different technique of looking at it as internalized energy. And then after you've tried that, go, okay, well, what feels good and right for me? Um really at the end of the day, there is no right and wrong way. You know, as long as you're respecting the wisdom of the tower, you're respecting ethics and boundaries and so on. What is most important is to find your own flow with the cards and find what gives you the most um, insight and you know, guidance. 
Hmm. That's not an answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I get it. Her way. I, I do. I, I, yes, yes, definitely your way for sure. It's, it's a much, much nicer way of looking at it. But for me, who's like more black and white, it just confuses me more. So I, I'm going to need your help, like a lot of it. So um, I'm going to reach out to you and, and make sure that we get connected because I need to, I, I actually haven't used the tarot in a very long time. Mm -hmm. But recently I've been called to revisit it and your visit to our show has solidified that. So I'm going to get a deck and I'm going to reach out to you and say, teach me, uh, <laughs> master. Right. Do you, so do you sell those decks then on your website? Yeah. So if, so if loving like the vibe of the Biddy Tarot deck, just go over to biddytarot.com forward slash deck. And yeah, you can purchase our deck. Um, it's all shipped from the US as well. So that makes it nice okay. and easy for you guys. Um, and yeah, even if you go to biddytarot.com forward slash shop, uh, then you can also access all of our beautiful tarot courses and just know like it is really, it's it's not about teaching a very set and specific system. It is about allowing that intuition to flow, having the fullest expression of yourself and being able to use tarot in a way that's going to actually help you and empower you and create the kinds of outcomes and that dream life that you are really aspiring to. Wow. That's awesome. Um yes. We've got to talk about your book. Mm -hmm. The timing is perfectly perfect because your book is just now hitting the stands, right? It's called Intuitive Manifesting. What can someone find? Oh, and there she is with a copy. Ooh. Of course she has a copy very, very close <laughs> hand. Um, how, what can someone expect if they, if they pick up the book? Yeah, so I really wrote Intuitive Manifesting because I've seen so many traditional manifesting methods that are – no, great, but they're often quite linear and a lot about like the hustle and the grind. So you want something, you work hard to get it and you like just keep grinding and going for it until you get to that goal. But for me, my manifesting journey has been a lot more about how do I weave in my intuition alongside manifesting so that as I'm manifesting, I'm doing it in a way that is in alignment with my highest good and my highest self. And I'm doing it in a way that is more... Um, like in flow, less linear, more fluid and flexible. So intuitive manifesting is really about those four steps of intuitive manifesting that I shared with you and how we can align our intuition using things like the tarot cards or even using things like journaling, um, meditation, guided visualizations, all of this to really support us bringing our dreams and our aspirations into fruition, but in a way that feels aligned and feels true and authentic to what's uh, what our real soul and soul purpose is and our mission in life oh my god i love her i just love it <laughs> I, I i i love your message it resonates so strongly with me i'm so so glad we got a chance to meet because this is uh, okay I'm, I'm buying your book i'm getting your courses cards. i'm buying your cards uh uh you know what i, I wish i had met her because all that money is going to be going <laughs> up. <laughs> oh, Bridget, you are beautiful, wonderful. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your wisdom with us and our audience. If someone wanted to uh, reach out and um, and get in touch with you, uh, I know we've mentioned it a couple of times, but let's just split it one last time. How can someone reach out to you? Yeah, awesome. Check us out on biddytarot.com. Um, we've got so many like free resources as well to help you learn tarot as well as our paid courses and then we're very active too on instagram so it's just at biddy tarot we post cool things like tarot spread so you can start to use your tarot cards straight away um, and lots of yeah just juicy content around tarot that will get you inspired oh that sounds great i love how she calls it juicy content i know <laughs> and i just literally just now as you're watching me look off camera i just bookmarked your website so we are going to be <laughs> very good friends in the very near future love um it. Uh, oh my God, there was something else I wanted. Oh, uh, so, but there are, I've, I've, I've done a, a dive of your website and there are so many free resources there. One that we haven't touched on is your podcast. You oh, wow. do a podcast as well. What is that all about? Yeah. So the Biddy Tarot podcast includes lots of tarot tips, tutorials, um, guests. It has some of our certified tarot uh, advisors as well who join us. 
Um, it is currently on hiatus for oh, probably about no. a year or so um, <laughs> because I'm actually birthing another <clears throat> another whole um, training program, another certification program for this more coaching style of tarot. So that's coming out next year. Um, but yeah, this I, I don't know. I think we have like maybe it's three hundred episodes. What are you guys up to with your wow. how many episodes? Wow, we we're not the, we're not at three hundred. We're at eighty one one ninety. Oh yeah, I thought we we're at past two. No, we're not. Well, I mean, if you if you take into account all the shorter ones, and yes, we're over two hundred. But the the full length first run interviews were about one ninety at this point. Yeah. Awesome. That's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So, you know, like how much work and effort and love yes. goes yes. into creating the, the podcast. Yeah. So I know that I just need a little break so I can birth some other new things, but it will probably come back online sometime in the future. Yeah. Well, that's not to say that a lot, the, the content that's there, the, the episodes that are there are incredibly full of wealth of knowledge and um, very worth going back and revisit, re revisiting. So even if you're not sending out new episodes, you still have all these episodes that are a treasure trove. So yeah. I would encourage anyone to go and listen to it because um, I'm going to. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. But it's such a wonderful time. I had such a great time talking to you. Thank you so much for reaching out. And uh, we look forward to being in touch. Fantastic. It's been a joy. And thank you for every, everything that you bring into your audience um, and bringing all these beautiful you know, metaphysical uh, topics. And yeah, it's great work. Love it. Well, thank, thank you so you. much. And a huge thank you to you. If you like the show and the guests that we bring on, then you're definitely want to be a part of our inner circle. See, the inner circle is absolutely free to join and it gives you an opportunity to not only interact with Karen and I, but you'll also be able to engage with fellow listeners like yourself. You'll also find tons of discounts for services from some of our past guests so that you can check them out for yourself to see which path makes the most sense for you. We're also going to be doing a lot of great giveaways like free sessions from some of our guests. You can gain access to behind the scenes videos, even get the chance to be on the show with us. All the while, you'll be helping the show grow by letting people know about us. Did we mention it's 100% free? Check out our show notes for the link to our inner circle and join today and then drop in and say hello and tell us what episode you heard this on. We might just give you a shout out on the show. Well, that's all for now. But we'll see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysician. Until then, take care. Mm -hmm.